So today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to the Overwatch Workshop so you understand all the basics, how to get started, and I'm going to add a few segments so you can skip around to different parts uh, for whatever you need. Okay, so the first part of setting up your workshop is setting up your custom game. So you're probably going to start with a preset. Uh, I really just suggest a deathmatch or skirmish. I'm just going to do a deathmatch quick. Yeah, modes is where we're going to do a few more setting changes. You're going to want to go into all. You probably want to turn game mode start to immediate. You can read through these. I'm sure you can figure out what they are. Uh, and then you can go through deathmatch settings, how long your game is, what your score to win is. Uh, I'll just set this to 30. Uh, your game length, you can actually, if you want it longer than 15 minutes, which is the max here, you can do that later in workshop. After that is maps. You just click none, choose what maps you want. I'm going to do I can Wild Halloween awesome heroes this is where you choose what heroes you want to be able you go to hero roster uh, you can do none and then choose ones that you want on you can just keep them all turn off ones that you hate like roadhog uh, if you want one team to have some and one team to have others and you're not in a deathmatch mode you can specify which team you're on you can also go into specific characters change their cooldown times change their damage change their health like tell them if they can shoot, tell them if they can punch, say what their ammo is. You can also just do that for general to change all the characters at once. And now we're done with custom games. Okay, now that we're done with uh, setting up the custom game, I'll tell you the very basic controls of workshop that you need to know. Right here, this plus is how you add a rule. You can add conditions right here, add actions right here. These buttons are just gonna select all in whatever area. Once you have something selected, which you can also select like this, you can copy it and then paste it like this. You can delete it with the little trash can there. Don't worry about these right now. And one other thing you can do is right here where it says copy. When you click copy, not only does it make it so you can paste it, but you can also paste it into a notepad and you'll see the rule is going to be right here with all the code in it. And so if you prefer to type it, you can do it here. And then you can also copy this code, go back into Overwatch and then paste it like that. Similarly, if you want to copy a whole mode, you can do it right here and then put it here. You'll see all the settings and I can import it back just like that. One thing to be wary of is that uh, sometimes your mode will break and you'll see how it says Eichenwald and there's like a million numbers right here. Uh, it's pretty much just going to break your game mode. It's not going to be the right mode. Nothing that you do is going to remain and all you have to do is change Eichenwald all the numbers after it to zero and this works for any map you set it to zero and once you import it back it's gonna work fine there won't be any breaks okay now that we know some controls i'm just going to talk about uh the events the main events is ongoing global and ongoing each player although these other ones can also be used so ongoing each player activates for every player ongoing global activates once server-wide but for event player you can also specify character like genji or uh, character slots too, like slot two, which is just referencing this, these slots. Uh, and then these other ones are pretty much all variants of ongoing each player. Like player earned elimination is just gonna activate for the player whenever they earned an elimination. Okay, now I'm gonna talk quickly about conditions. I'm not going to tell you all the conditions because there's actually a lot of conditions. You'll notice right here, there's actually quite a few. Okay, I explained this badly, but pretty much a condition is just a condition that has to be met for the actions to occur. But what it's going to do is just set the match time once the game is in progress. Uh, so conditions are helpful. If I didn't have this in game is, is game in progress, when I start the game, I would actually have 60 minutes uh, of just choosing my character because I never told the game before you set the match time to 60 minutes, let the game start first. Uh, another important thing to know about conditions is that rules don't only activate when an event happens, they also uh, activate when a condition happens. So if you said ongoing each player, even though you didn't say player died, you could add a condition that said is dead event player true. And the event player is just referencing this player, the player that this rule is affecting and it's going to be affecting every player in the game and this isn't and this is going to occur every single time the player dies 
So there's actually a lot of conditions uh, that are probably good to know. There's is on ground. It's gonna activate if you're on the ground. Is in air. It's gonna activate if you're in the air. Is alive. It's always. It's gonna happen only if you're alive. Uh, is game in progress. It's only gonna start if the game's in progress. Hero of. Hero of. Event player equals hero. And then you can choose a hero. So it's only gonna activate if they're on that hero. Another one that's actually helpful is is button held. It's only gonna activate if you're pressing a button. There's also is using ability one, ability two, ultimate. Uh, to avoid confusing, ability one is gonna be shift and ability two is gonna be E. If you don't use those keybinds, shift is gonna be Genji dash or ability one. Ability two is gonna be Genji deflect. So that's, and then your ultimates, obviously you're gonna be your ult. Okay, so anyway, there's a lot of conditions. You should just explore them. Uh, they're named pretty clearly, so if you think of something, it probably exists. Type it in, see if it's there. If it's not, you might have to think of a workaround. Okay, I'm actually gonna quickly talk about actions. Actions are generally gonna, you can do a lot of things with actions, but really basic things are gonna be any character setting that you can change in your custom game, you can change in here. So set health, uh, or set max health, set max ammo, damage heal you can like when i say damage or heal it's not how much you're healing it you're when you say heal it's just going to heal whatever player damage kill uh you can resurrect you can respawn some more fun things that you can also do is set invisible if you want to set your player to invisible uh you can set status and then there's a few status options frozen knocked down or stunned you can, you can say how long it's going to last. Okay, so now that I've given you a brief introduction to actions in general, I'm going to talk specifically about vectors. Uh, so if you ever want to, if you're ever really dealing with specific vectors, you're probably going to want uh, to create some HUD text. So HUD text is just on your screen. There's going to be some text that says something. Uh, all you really need to know here is you're probably going to only want it to be visible to you as the player, so event player, and you don't want to use headers. Headers are gross. You're going to want to use subheader or text. I'm just going to use text, and you just say custom string, and then whatever you type here is what's going to appear. But you also don't actually have to type things here. You can say, you could say pretty much anything. Any, but what I'm going to say is position of event player, and what it's going to do is just tell me my coordinates. Uh, and I want it to be on the top right of my screen. And so now I'm going to get rid of that, and you're going to see. Okay, I should do that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to have one that activates at the start, the very start. When I very first enter the game, it's going to set my match time to zero, which is going to skip the assembling phase. So, skip, assembly. I really suggest that you try to stay organized. And then this one is going to be match time. There we go. So it's just going to skip the assembly. Once the game is in progress, it's going to set the match time. Now you'll see, the game is an hour long, I didn't have to wait, and you can see in the top right of my screen, it's telling me my chords as I move, so of course the, it goes X, Y, and then Z, uh, X being left and right, Z being back and forth, and Y being up and down, and so uh, you can just think of a vector as a chord in it, pretty much, that's all it really is, and so let's write down this coordinate, and we're going to say 80, uh, 13, and then negative 95. And now, you can make a new rule. We're gonna say, ongoing each player has spawned. So once we spawn, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna teleport us, and this might look scary, but it's just, just some coordinates, and we just wrote them down. It's 80, 13, negative 95. So we're gonna say 80, 13, negative 95. So of course this only works on specific, on whatever map 
you're testing the cores on, so if you have a ton of multiple maps, you're not going to be able to do something like this. But you can see, as soon as I spawned, I teleported to our cores. So there's really a lot of things that you can do with vectors. Uh, there's also impulses. You could apply an impulse towards a vector, but usually you're not going to want to do that. Instead, you'd want to apply an impulse probably forward or backwards. So let's go ahead and apply an impulse forward 30. You want it to player on button press of interact because it's not being used for anything else. So we're gonna we're just gonna call it dash. So now we have a quick dash ability. So when I press F, I'm gonna go ahead and dash forward. You can see this happening. You can see I'm moving forward every time I press F. Well you can see it's pretty pretty inconsistent. When I'm jumping, I go significantly farther than then when I'm on the ground. So there's a few different can, uh, ways to fix this. You could make it so it's only if you're on the ground. You can make it so if it's only is in air. But what I would do probably is just make it so it also applies an impulse up, like 10. Going straight, but you're also going up a bit. So, but you can see I can keep doing it which is probably not something that we want, but we're gonna fix that later. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk about loops. So pretty much all a loop is, is it's just looping what you do. So if I added a loop here, what it's gonna do is when I press interact, it's gonna apply these impulses and then it's gonna keep applying these impulses over and over again. Usually this is gonna crash your server unless you're smart about it. So you see my game isn't crashing or anything. It's all fine, but as soon as I press F, and so what you can do is add a wait, and it's just going to make it so every 0 0.0016 seconds, you're going to be applying these impulses. But in the meantime, I'm gonna, before we test this, I'm going to talk about waits quick. There's two kind of waits. There's wait and wait until. Wait is you're just going to be using for number. It's in seconds, so that's five seconds, one second. You want it as little seconds as possible, so that's as little as it's going to let us. A wait until is uh, going to be a condition. You're waiting until a condition is true. So you could say, is on ground. And then it's only going to apply that impulse, or it's only going to loop, once we're back on the ground. But in this case, we're probably just going to want to be waiting for 0.25 seconds before we loop, sure. A single time, we just keep getting applied upwards. So, there you go. That's probably not what you want. There's also loop if, and it's only going to be looping if the condition is true. So it's just like the wait until. What you will probably be using is loop if condition is false or true. So all this is going to say is if it's going to check, where it's going to apply these impulses, wait a bit so we don't crash our game, then it's going to loop this again but only if we're still holding interact so you can see that we go up and if i hold it we just keep going up but if i stop holding it we stop going up one more thing uh that's quite similar to looping is an abort so an abort is just going to stop these actions if we said loop if uh loop if uh we just put loop let's just say we put a loop and we're going to keep flying up in the sky, right? But we don't want that. So instead, we're going to add an abort if condition is false. And so what that's going to do is it's not going to, it's just going to stop all of the actions, including the loop, if we're not holding interact. Okay, now we can get into a, a bit of more complex stuff, but it's still pretty necessary if you want to do anything really cool. Uh, and that's variables. And what we're going to do is make an ability. So we have our coordinates being displayed here. But what I'm also going to do is you can see that there's global variables, but there's also player variables, and they act just like a global event or a player event. Player variable is just specific to the player, and a global is one variable for the whole server. So what we're going to do is set player variable A to true. So when the game starts, this variable is going to be true. Now we can come back to this. Earlier I told you not to worry about it. 
In these, you really don't need to, but right in this middle one it says edit variable names. And you can see A, which is one that we're using, and we're using the player version, not the global version. And we're just gonna call it dash ability. Just to stay organized. You really, it's just completely if you want to, but you can see it says event player dot dash ability equals true. So now what I'm gonna say is player variable dash ability equals true. And what I want to happen is I want it to apply an impulse. Uh, I'm gonna say up four and then forward 10. So now if dash ability, if it says dash ability is ready and we press interact, it's gonna do this. What we're gonna actually do is set player variable dash ability to false. And once we do this, we're not gonna be able to dash anymore. We're only gonna be able to dash once. We just add a new one that sets dash ability to true. All I'm doing is creating an ability with a cooldown. So if we added a wait that's five seconds long here. So anyway, let's just go through this quick. So for every player, if you're pressing interact and dash ability is true, it's gonna apply this impulse set dash ability to false so that you can't press it again and then five seconds later it's going to set it back to true letting you press it again so when i click interact bam that is such a wimpy dash god damn but you can see i can only do it every five seconds you, you don't know when it's on cooldown and we can use the hud text when so what i want to do is first when it says dash ability is false Instead of doing position of, I'm going to do custom string, and I'm going to say not ready. Let's say it's green. Oh, no, it's going to be red because it's not ready. So now, when it's not ready, there's going to be text that's red. It says not ready. But when we set it back to true, it's going to say ready. And instead of red, it's going to be green. But there's also one issue here is that it's not going to say ready at the start of the game. So what we also need to do is add this ready right here that's green actually not going to delete the text so you can see it says ready but when i press interact to do my dash it says not ready it says ready now so i can use it again but it just keeps stacking and it's just going to create this giant fucking text column so what we actually need to do is in our ability we can just destroy HUD text. There's also a destroy all HUD text if you want to destroy all HUD text, but destroy text, last text ID will work here. And it's just gonna destroy whatever the last piece of text that we put up was. So, like this. Right? Ready? Not ready. Wait five seconds. Ready. Bam. So you can see it's working. We just gave ourselves an dash ability on every different character whenever we press F. So that's pretty sick. One other thing. So I'm actually going to disable our dash ability so that we can use interact again here. What you should do, you can create dummy bots. If you don't have someone to test with, you can create a dummy bot. It's just going to act like a AI, except that it actually won't move or anything. You have to tell it to move. And we're going to do position, event player, facing, event player. And so this is just going to create an on a bot at the position of our event player when we press interact. And if we, and then we're going to add a destroy all dummy bots right before it. So you can see, I just spawned an on at me whenever I press F, there's an on at. So if you need to test player interaction, you can just do this. So that's all you're really going to need to know for the basics of workshop. If you want a specific video on anything, just leave a comment uh, on any workshop thing. And if you're having any issues with your workshop, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. But I really highly suggest that maybe you check out someone else's code that's similar, that has a similar goal to yours, and you can see what they did. Try to learn from that. And also, you can use the workshop inspector, which is going to tell you every time 
something activates and you can try to use it to know oh this isn't activating stuff like that 